hey, so you might not know that the way that you're assigning instruments and samples to the mixer is bad, and it's not as good as it could be. It's messy and disorganized, and I'm going to show you the better way of doing things in FL Studio. So the way that you're doing it is you're loading up the channel rack, opening up a new channel, loading it up, and then from there, it's just going out to the master, it's unset. So then you go in, you'll do one of three or more things. Uh, you can just scroll up until you have it selected into the right bus that you want it to go into, or you'll go over, give it a free uh, mixer spot, and then from there you'll route it into some bus if that's your workflow. Um, or you'll go into the plugin itself, maybe you'll open this up and hit that button right there for track, and then you can click that, or identically, this is the third thing, you can hit Control L. Control L, it's a hotkey you very well might know, and it's good because when you do that, it actually automatically names uh, this for you. And that's really convenient, it's really appealing, but what happens when maybe you wanna move this to a different mixer channel, or if you're if you have a lot of plugins and then you're scrolling up and down and you accidentally knock this uh, with your scroll wheel. Look at that, it just went from 20 to 28. Let's see what happened. Whoa, this still exists, but the sound's coming out of 28. And then you have to go figure out what went wrong, why suddenly your mix is going all over the place. Um, suddenly something, suddenly your voice doesn't have auto-tune on it or something, um, and it's terrible. So here's the better way of doing things. and. This is something you've very likely seen, but you've probably been scared of it if you're like me. And it's the F8 key on your keyboard. And you probably wiped that from your mind. Open it up, it's like, ah, no, not this thing again. It's so overwhelming, what is this? That's my experience. Um, I'm here to tell you, this is my favorite screen in the world as of the past few months. And uh, what you can do is you can get rid of a little of the confusion by just typing in whatever you want. If you know you're looking for serum, type in serum. Make sure you spell serum right. Take it, drag it, and where do you put it? Put it straight on one of the uh, one of the playlist tracks, and look what happens. As soon as you drop it on there, it gives it a name. It initializes any uh, VST or um, even sample, which I'll show in a second, with a playlist uh, pattern, which you can go into and start writing things in. But most importantly, look over on the mixer. This is Serum 2. Serum 2 has been assigned to the first free mixer track. And it's not in the exact same way that the, uh, the other example that we made, how it goes to the mixer. If you move 28 around, it just kind of floats. This input just goes wherever you want. But if you start shifting around this new Serum, number 2, that's an instrument track, You'll notice this is grayed out, but you can still move it. It actually takes its name with it. This, this track has been like under the hood actually linked to, uh, to that instrument. And that's really, really nice if you have complex projects to not have to worry about these things becoming decoupled and just confusion ensuing. You can have really complex projects like this, really complex mixers. Uh, without the confusion that comes with the other method. So from here, in this method, you'll always have an instrument corresponding to a uh, mixer channel, and then you can route it into wherever you want it to go from there. So that's the first good thing. The second good thing that's like equally as useful is if you're someone who does lots of automation like me, let's say you have a macro there, whatever, you have some knob that you want to tweak, uh, you can go after you've tweaked it, get the last tweak control and uh, make an automation clip. And so you'll see here it's made an automation clip just like normal. But look, over here, it because it knows which instrument this is, it's linked the automation clip to this track. And that might not seem that mind blowing, but like when you're working in this uh, project that has all these different automations, you're automating this, you're automating that. Let's just do a lot of them. 
really quick. Automate, automate the glide. Let's see what's going on. So you have all these automations, and I very, very rarely have a project that's less than 45 tracks. And to be able to, by one click, hit this little arrow and collapse that group and all its subtracks is so nice to be able to get a grasp of what all is in your project. So that's another really good thing. So this, uh, this workflow also applies to um, samples. If I go into my little library, get something, load it in there. I just took it, I dragged it straight onto the track and it asks me which kind of a uh, track I wanna make. And usually what I'll wanna do is create an audio track or an instrument track. Audio clips are a little less useful, but um, they just kind of put the audio onto the playlist. If you do an instrument track, it'll load up a piano roll and a sampler that um, you can go in and, well, you can go over here, run the kick, and it's right there, and you can do whatever pattern that you want. And it has all of, it's one of these guys, whatever you call them. It's a sampler that you can trigger. Um, or you can take that, load it up as an audio track, and then it places that straight onto the playlist. And what you'll notice is that these two here have actually, let's see, where are they? It's 18 and 19. Now, by the way, I used shift and scroll to move them around down here. They've already gotten their uh, designated mixer tracks. They're linked and they're not gonna uh, come, apart, come apart. You can actually drag these off, the patterns, um, but that's the least of my concerns. So over here you can trigger things with MIDI and over here you can actually play the audio, uh, mess around with it in whatever way you do. And uh, that's super great. So the final thing that is better about this workflow than your control L method is that you can just get rid of any of these at any time and there's no cleanup involved. Watch this. Say I want to get rid of this serum, right click, delete. It asks me, do I want to un just unlink it from the channel um, or do I want to delete it? I want to delete it. I want to get rid of the uh, serum instance and the mixer, delete. And it tells me what I exactly want to delete. I can get rid of just the pattern, just the mixer track, or just the automations that I've got nested down there. Let's get rid of all of them. Boom, gone. Over here, it's gone. It's back to the default color. For some reason, I've chosen to have a different color other than gray, because I like that. And you can get rid of all of these the exact same. Delete, uh, delete subtracts. There aren't any, so I'll leave that be. Delete this. Where is it? Delete. And you'll see over here, they no longer exist over here, but your old serum that you've used, the control L trick is just kicking around. You have to go manually delete it. You have to delete all of any of the automations that you've made. For example, if I made an automation um, and then I deleted the serum, there's just this, uh, this thing sticking around and later down the line in the project, you're like, wait, what is this? What, it, what is this automation clip? If I delete it, will something bad happen? Um, that's something you just don't have to worry about anymore. So anyway, use the F8 key, load stuff onto the playlist tracks, and your life will be so much better and stop using Control-L. Thanks, bye.